Hello everybody and welcome back to another video from HSTV and in today's video of Medics Wednesday I'm going to be going through all of my experiences of everything that I found difficult when I was applying to study medicine at a UK university. Now currently I am a first year medicine student at the University of Edinburgh and um, I did apply to three other universities and I was quite successful so um, I do want to share and just get across to you guys that the application process is difficult I will try my best to give any tips or advice of stuff that I wished I had done or things that um, you know I know now and I would really advise you guys to do to make your application as strong as possible and to get through it with the highest level of determination and passion that you can so um, if you're excited give this video a thumbs up and um, do let me know your experiences any questions any worries down in the comments and I hope that I can lend a little helping hand and um, get you through this application. So um, let's go. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put up some notes or things to take away from this video on this side of uh, the video so you guys know exactly what the key points are that I'm trying to get across to you. Um, what The other thing I want to do is actually go through every part of the medicine application process and then go through everything that I found tricky and any advice or tips that I have for you. That way um, now you guys know the kind of structure of the video and I will try to leave some timestamps down in the description as well just in case you're looking for a particular topic. So I think that's me covered the organization parts of things. Uh, actually, let's get on to it now. Okay, so let's start with the grades part of things. Really, um, the things about getting the good grades uh, that I found difficult was really one, organization, and two, I maybe didn't ask for as much help as I could have. So these are the top two things that I would say really recommend you to do. So organization, what I mean by this is really make a timetable of when you need to revise, when you need to do homework, when you're going to see friends, when you're having free time, that kind of thing. And sometimes I know it's annoying to have like a rigid timetable going on, but Really, if you need to get the good grades and if you want this application to go successfully, you need to be an organized person. You need to be on top of things. You cannot be falling behind with work. And that leads me on to asking for help. If there is a topic that you find difficult, whether that be national fives, GCSEs, hires, A-levels, advanced hires, whatever qualification it is, never think that you can get through it alone because really, Things will start piling up and at that point it will be too late for you to get help. So when you do a topic that you kind of are a bit shaky on, you know, use the help from your teachers, um, ask your peers, try and work it out and try and get pretty solid on that topic as you're doing it so that there is no backlog with the topics that you struggle with. And when it comes to revision, there might be a couple questions here and there that you're finding difficult, but really a little bit every so often and asking help when needed will really go along way in helping you to get the good grades that you need especially if it is like a two-year course or a one-year course that you're doing so like in Scotland National 5 is spread over two years now that's a lot of content and you know you have the summer holidays in between as well so I don't really completely agree with the system I have to say but you know in that kind of time period you will forget things and you will find things hard and things you know won't stick in your mind as other things do so do ask for help whenever you need it and don't wait until the very last few weeks before your exams because really I'm telling you and everyone will tell you this but it will be too late at that point so don't think that you can go through your whole textbook in one night or even one week. Um, yeah that is my main advice on getting good grades and stuff that maybe I could have done a bit better. Okay, um, so the next thing I want to talk about is volunteering and work experience. So I've said this a few times in my previous videos, but really it's not about how much work experience or voluntary you do. I guess there, with volunteering there is an aspect of commitment. So again, organization is very key in this as well. You need to get ahead of the game. So, you know, with volunteering, you want to show that you've got about, you know, preferably at least two years but if you're really struggling try and get at least six months of kind of good volunteering experience that you've had at a place to really show your commitment skills and again organization as well and one of the problems that I came across is in the UK if you're under 16 you are not able to get work experience in a clinical setting such as a hospital so the ways to work around that um, is uh, one volunteering so volunteering doesn't have to be in a clinical setting volunteering could really be anywhere that you're committed to and you're helping people work 
working as part of a team, doing some sort of activities and collaborating with people, getting those communication skills to a good level. So I uh, uh, did work voluntary work in a care home and the care home lady was really nice. She let me do that because I was just about to turn 16. But really, a lot of people, if you're not turning 16, do you know work experience and volunteering in a pharmacy, for example. That's one of the things that I did because I wasn't turning 16. And while everyone else was doing work experience in hospitals, it doesn't have to be in a hospital. As long as you're seeing some journey, some part of the patient experience, you're in a good place. And as long as you're seeing teamwork happening, you're seeing communication, collaboration, leadership skills, all of that you're building upon doesn't really matter where you do your work experience. Yes, it's very good to be able to shadow a doctor in a hospital or in a more clinical setting, but remember you have an opportunity to do that after you turn 16 as well. So really that was one of the barriers that I came across and um, how I was struggling. Now the other thing is that a lot of places won't actually want volunteers so again I literally had a diary where I kept writing all of the places that I'd phoned up all their numbers and you know stuff that they'd said to me some people said bring a CV now I, you know as like a 15 16 year old I didn't have a CV I've never worked so these are like kind of big steps and milestones that you have to kind of get across and it is difficult I have to say and the more independently you do it Trust me, the more um, confident you will feel in that and the more kind of established you will feel from that and the more you will learn from that situation for next time. So, you know, don't, um, if you can, like don't get your parents to phone up places or um, ask help from your teachers. Of, of course do if you're really struggling, but try and do as much of um, this organization of volunteering and work experience as independently as possible. Again, it will give you plenty to write about in your personal statement and when it comes to interviews as well. Just even saying that you organise something independently will be, you know, a tick in the box. So that was some of the barriers that I came across. Really, um, when I was at my volunteering and was at my work experience, um, sometimes you feel a bit useless and feel like, you know, you don't really know what's going on and you're kind of the odd one out there. But really, just absorb in as much of it as you can um, and do go for breaks as well because sometimes in a hospital, doctors and nurses, they're very used to just working really really long hours without breaks and things but you're like a high school student so no one is going to expect you to go hours without eating or without going to the toilet so really don't be afraid to ask questions and dive in um, if you um, are fascinated by a topic or even if you just need to go to the toilet so just put yourself out there and take in as much as possible really no one is going to kick you out for asking questions and um but yeah, that's kind of my main advice and some of the things that I found difficult when I was looking for volunteering and work experience. Now, the next part that I'm going to talk about is probably the part that I found the most difficult and that is the UCAT. Um, I have to say, I've never done a more difficult exam than the UCAT in my life. Uh, not that I've done many exams anyway, but UCAT really is, it's a struggle. It's a big mountain to climb and really once you've climbed it, you will feel very proud of yourself regardless of whatever the turnout is. Um, you can't really um it's all about trying to get yourself familiar with the questions now i've said this before but i really recommend that you use medify this is not sponsored by them whatsoever i was recommended them by a friend and i it was really really useful um don't use books i'll be honest i did buy a ucat book I didn't find it as useful. Um, in fact, I bought a book first and then was later told about Medify. So really, um, I started off maybe not as great. There was a few tips in there about noticing very basic patterns and things, but you know, if you want proper realistic practice, timed as well, mock test type things, you need something that's on a computer, something that's digital to really get you into that process of thinking under time conditions. And that is the other thing, you know, it's all great being familiar with the question and the types of questions that could come up, but the thing that makes UCAT difficult is the speed that you have to do stuff at. And genuinely, sometimes when I'm reading over a paper or, you know, a news article or whatever, I sometimes go into full on UCAT mode and I'm like skimming through and catching the keywords and all that. So really, it does make a difference to your critical thinking and the way you think as well. Um, so yeah, but I guess like stuff that I found difficult, again, like just the timing and you know, having to do everything really quickly was really difficult for me, but um, just do lots of questions under timed conditions. 
that would be my biggest advice for you cat that is the only way you're gonna get semi decent at it um, I say semi decent because on the day you'll probably perform it differently to what you were doing in the house so yeah and especially with situational judgment these kind of things with situational judgment you can actually kind of learn from your mistakes and you know improve for the next time and know when to do what and what they're kind of looking for but with things like you know the quantitative section and um, especially like the abstract reasoning and that kind of thing like you know looking for how many circles are in two boxes that kind of thing you know could be anything on the day so for that really getting used to doing things quickly and as accurately as possible and um, I made a whole video on UCAT as well, five top tips as well um, that you can use so go and um, check that video out as well if you want a bit more information but things like using keyboard shortcuts, I didn't use keyboard shortcuts, um, I kind of wished I had actually, it would have been nice to actually flag questions, I didn't really use the flagging feature that much if I'm honest, um, I kind of like to go through everything once like really thoroughly and then skim over it after some people like to put instinctive answers first then go over it um, thoroughly so it's up to you which technique you use but keyboard shortcuts is definitely something I'd recommend um, you look at um, and that's something that I didn't do okay the next part then personal statements so um, by far the most difficult part about my personal statement in fact there was two main parts that I found quite difficult about my personal statement the first one is the introduction it took me over three hours just to get my introduction right and I remember sitting there at about five or six o'clock after school and you know working all the way up to about nine o'clock at night just trying to get this introduction right and I'll speak more about that in just a second and the second thing that I found really uh, quite difficult was just reflecting and I know that there's not really a tip or a piece of advice I could give you for reflection other than um, you know, if you're given an example of a sport you play or a club you do or a work experience or whatever, um, talk about what skills you learned from it and then link it back to medicine. So if you follow this kind of three stage formula, um, then I hope that your personal statement will um, be quite successful. I mean, I guess with the introduction, it, I can't really um, say much because it has to be unique for everyone. It's really your personal statement. So what I did maybe wouldn't work for you, but um, you know, try and do things maybe like an anecdote, starting with a personal experience that drew you into medicine and got you interested. Try not to start your personal statement with, I want to study medicine because, because really, you know, that's what 90% of the applicants are going to do. And really, I would much rather that you put in something unique that the reader will go, oh, this is different. And then they might be more inclined to actually go in and read it a bit more thoroughly rather than, you know, just kind of writing what everyone else is writing. Don't copy your friends. Um, I didn't do that. Just, just don't. Um, of course, read your friends' personal statements, regardless of whatever course they're doing. Give feedback, um, look back on like grammar mistakes and so on, but don't copy. Um, don't copy, don't lie. Um, I didn't do any of that, but really I know a lot of people who do. So just stay away from all that and that is the kind of formula I would give you for personal statements. Other than that, make it as unique as possible, about you as possible, and really try and sell yourself. And then the last bit um, is interviews, medicine interviews. Um, so what was difficult about that? I guess for me personally, um, I felt after I'd finished my interviews that regardless of the amount of prep that I had put in for the questions, like, you know, questions like why medicine, tell me a bit about yourself, questions like that, which, you know, are generally likely to come up in any medicine interview. I did prepare answers for a little bit and you know it wasn't like full scripted answers it was kind of bullet points of a plan I was going to work through in my head but when I went into the interviews I actually didn't say any of that stuff you know I just kind of blabbered on a bit and it was of course related to the question but it wasn't as scripted or as prepared as I had wanted it to be and I guess that is a good thing because remember interviews try and be as natural as possible try not to actually um, say things that you've just learned off by heart that's not what interviews are about interviews are all about your personality and who you are as a person and your communication skills so really if you're gonna you know learn things off a sheet of paper and then go and just repeat them to the interviewer the interviewer will know that so that is one of my uh, pieces of advice I would definitely give 
don't learn answers off by heart because genuinely the adrenaline on the day and your brain on the day will say something different and that is something I found in my experience when doing um, medicine interviews. Other than that, I didn't really have a lot of opportunities to do mock interviews. I would really recommend that you do some mock interviews with teachers or um, with friends or family or whatever. Put yourself in that um, pressured situation and it will help you. That's something I didn't do much of, um, but I would really recommend that you guys do. All right then, well, I have been through all the parts of the medicine application and I've told you all the parts that I struggle with and I found it difficult. So I really do hope I can um, save you from falling into some of these traps and um, I hope that this video will help you to get through your application. I know it's the summer holidays, gonna be a new batch of people um, with their applications coming through. You know, you can have grades coming out soon, got UCAT going on in the summer holidays, personal statements soon, try and get that draft in the summer holidays if you can and um, you know interviews happening later this year for some so really a lot of hectic and chaotic things with this application but I really do hope that my tips help you and if uh, if they do and if you do find them useful please do uh, feel free to share this video around and let me know in the comments as well how you've been doing and any parts that you've been finding difficult as always any video suggestions are welcome um, put them in the comments uh, if you want and other than that I will see you next week goodbye